Thank you. 
Good morning and welcome to our worship at Hampton Congregational Church, an open and affirming church, welcoming and seeking. We are pleased that you are here, whether you are here on Zoom and Facebook or in person. So today, Sunday, is the last Sunday of Epiphany. It's what is normally called Transfiguration Sunday. And we'll say a little bit more about that later. But this morning I thought at the end of this time and before we transition into Lent and I start talking about more of the modern history of our church and denomination, I would talk about the other major symbols that are within the sanctuary here. The flags. As you notice, there are two flags. One is the United, church, United States flag. The other is the Christian church flag. And they are placed very intentionally where they are. How many of you here know how to display the flag on a podium? Okay. Yeah, Boy Scouts. You have you any Boy Scouts, right? If you're facing this way, which side does the, the United States flag go on in a podium? <laughs> How? You're right, correct. <laughs> That's right. And whatever other flag belongs to that organization goes on this side, except in the church. And the church has long maintained that the flag that goes on the right is the Christian flag because every other entity in the world, in all of creation, is subject to God's church. If you notice, if you were to turn around and look, if you want to, you can, and you look at the, the flags that are from our, hanging from our balcony, you see that the United States flag is on the left. The Christian flag is on the right, giving it the place of honor as they are hung. Well, why are they hung there? Any of you been in churches where the flags are up front? I bet you have, whether you've noticed them or not. And some churches put the flag up on the chancel. But more churches put the flags down on the floor. That is where you are sitting. And the reason for that is simply that the church believes that every country, every entity, must hear the word of God. It is not spoken from the chancel by the flag, but rather it is heard by the flag or the country from down within the sanctuary. So these symbols, even if we don't notice them very often, because we're so used to them, are actually saying something about our faith. The Congregationalists have always believed, theologically, that the flag of the country, be it British, be it Russian, be it Ukrainian, be it the United States of America flag, must hear the word of God, and therefore takes the secondary place within the sacred space where we worship our God. Let us, at this time, take a deep breath, center ourselves, and begin our worship. Please join me in the call to worship. You may rise in body or in spirit. We see the light of Christ. We hear the word of creation. We feel the life that flows from God's love. And we know. So let us sing out our faith. Let's worship. 
The first hymn will be All Things Bright and Beautiful, number 20. Let us affirm our faith, the foundation of our life and hope. Please join me in the affirmation. We believe in you, O oh God, eternal spirit. You call the worlds into being. You seek in holy love to save all people. You judge people and nations. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit. You call us into your church. In Jesus Christ, you have come to us conquering sin and death. You have entitled the world to yourself. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. We are going to skip a time for children today and move on to the reading. The reading is from Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. 
Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. May the Holy Spirit guide our understanding of this scripture. Epiphany, we consider the transfiguration, the event when Jesus joins with two of heaven's figures, Moses and Elijah, for a conversation, and in the process is transfigured. You might call this the Marvel version of our scripture. God's voice, the voice from the cloud, affirms and blesses Jesus to the disciples who witnessed the event. For the early church, this was a very important story, the revelation of Jesus as a figure from heaven. As all three synoptic gospels actually include this story more or less as it is. The good news of this morning's scripture is simply, Jesus is God's son, the chosen one. That is the revelation, the epiphany that we are offered. As modern readers of the scripture, whose faith is formed or forming already, the story seems to affirm what we already believe. And so it seems to be maybe a little over the top. We don't need all the drama. And since we're not Jewish, we aren't in need of establishing Jesus' credentials 
in the line of Jewish prophets. So this story seems sort of like an embellishment to what we already know. That leaves me, the pastor, with a question. What do you preach about? Over the years, I've shared the mythic nature of this story. Now myths, as many of you know, are very important and not to be seen as mere nonsense. For instance, the myth that our country is a democracy is very compelling. It guides our actions and sometimes causes us great consternation. The Transfiguration is one of the most powerful stories and myths in the early formation of our church. By connecting it to the past wealth of Jewish tradition and by pointing to the future, God has blessed and given to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Then again, on some other time, I've preached on the dangers we face like Peter, James, and John, who were tempted to turn this dynamic event, this relationship between God, the prophets, Jesus, into a stable, unchanging, lifeless structure, which serves only to memorialize that which was once alive and now is static, sterile, and dead. A danger that the church has faced for millennia. And again, I've wondered about the silence. Silence we share with Peter, James, and John concerning what we have witnessed as disciples. Following Jesus up the mountain or anywhere can lead us to witness some amazing events and participate in some astounding relationships. Yet, we're reluctant to share what we've seen and experienced, wondering if our God moments stack up or pass muster, or maybe it's just because we're embarrassed to speak about our faith. Obviously, Peter, James, and John finally broke their silence. Will we? And then some years have simply given a cursory reading to the transfiguration story to move quickly into the movement and the story that follows. Now, we didn't read that in our scripture, so I'll give you a little background or knowledge about it. You see, Jesus couldn't stay up on the mountain. He had to come down because his life and death waited. The crowd waited, and the father and his son waited. The father said to Jesus, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. And suddenly, a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It throws him into convulsions until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, you faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Hmm. That's possibly a topic for another sermon. Well, bring your son here. And while the son was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unknown spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to the father. This is not the mountaintop. This is life. This is sickness, despair, failure, the threat of destruction. And it's also the story of healing. Jesus, the transfigured one, God's Son, the Chosen One, rebukes the unclean spirit, the destructive forces that bring suffering and fear, and brings healing. Not on the mountaintop, but in the midst of life. 
This is Jesus whom our faith is grounded in. This is the one who does not live up on that mountaintop or in the glories of the past. This is the one who lives in the midst of the crowd and ministers to the difficulties and fears of life. This is Jesus, our Lord. Well, those sermons are in the past. What of today? What might this scripture point to for the life of Hampton Congregational Church? Those of us gathered here on Zoom or on Facebook, is it that we cannot live in the mountaintops of the past? Those past high points were great. We have the pictures to prove it. But they are in the past. And now we're in the present. Our life in the present is full of ups and downs. Just ask the trustees who have to maintain the building or the executive committee who must deal with the decisions about the pandemic or then the search committee who may be feeling that it's on a pretty steep incline out of a rather deep valley at the moment and hoping that their work will lead to a mountaintop and not just another valley. Well, the early church referred to themselves as the people of the way. And HCC is a people on the way, moving forward in faith. We're a people whose faith leads us to minister to ourselves and to others in the name of Jesus our Lord. So mountaintop or valley, we keep on sharing our compassion, being generous, and trusting the Spirit to guide our journey. We hear the good news of the transfiguration. Jesus is God's Son, the Chosen One. And like Peter, James, and John who witnessed the event, like the crowd who witnessed the healing of the boy, we too are astounded at the greatness of our God. Amen. I invite you now to share the signs of peace with those around you, for the peace of Christ is with you. Yes. Peace. We now turn to announcements for the good of our congregation and our relationships. Are there any? Yes. Bill, I'm not sure everybody heard that. So here comes Marty with the microphone. Just unmute it, it was on. <laughs> Do you? If you bring the mic here, I'll, I'll do it. There you go. Um, just to announce that the, the deacons are meeting today. The executive committee is, uh, committee is meeting next week, I believe. But we're going to, tomorrow, go to the more um, common sense uh, masking, that is, uh, whatever you feel comfortable with, with common sense social distancing. This is all consistent with what's going on in schools and uh, the state. 
Um, Scouts have their own challenge on social distancing, but we'll discuss that after. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that, that'll be the, the change. And obviously, we should all respect uh, whatever people feel comfortable with. Any questions? And uh, my son, Micah, is uh, doing the plunge for hunger. He's, I think, been procrastinating for warmer weather, and he hasn't gotten it. So. It's happening this afternoon. Anyone interested in donating to benefit Covenant Soup Kitchen, um, feel free to let us know. What was that? He's got to cut a hole in the ice, yeah. But, you know, that's, that's what he wants. So we'll see how it goes. All right. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? I just wanted to share um, a recent celebration with the Cub Scouts was a blue and gold celebration, which is the birthday of Cub Scouts. Um, and in particular, something special, um, Bill Johnson came to the meeting and he um, talked about his own experience in scouting. Um, he's one of the founders of Cub Scouts at HCC. So that was really special. And I especially appreciated his generosity in presenting all the Cub Scouts, a unique patch um, from his own personal collection in scouting as he attended uh, many international uh, jamborees over the years. So I just wanna acknowledge that special gift and also um, just the specialness of him in our congregation and also in our, in our uh, troop and pack. So thanks, Bill. Are there any other announcements? I have two. One is that the confirmation group will be meeting following this service. Uh, it's for a beginning, an information meeting, perhaps setting some schedule. So you are invited to meet. What I don't know is where we should meet. And so I trust that someone is going to point us into the correct direction because the deacons also need to be having a meeting. The other is that for Ash Wednesday this year, which is this coming Wednesday, uh, you'll all receive a link to a Zoom meeting, uh, a worship meditation at seven o'clock on Wednesday evening and you're all invited to attend. Are there any other announcements? Well, let us then join our hearts, minds, and souls in the attitude of prayer. Our God, we come before you offering ourselves to you and asking for your blessing upon this offering of self, of hands, of work, of the tokens that we are giving to you. We ask that you might bless them, that they would bring hope to others. And as we draw near to you in prayer, trusting that you listen and respond, guiding us in our lives and blessing the world, we again today come with prayers for peace in our world, even while people suffer war and oppression. Strengthen our resolve that we might persevere in our prayers and our work on behalf of your peace for our brothers and sisters. In the Ukraine, in Africa, in our own cities and communities, encourage those who would lead us toward loving our neighbors and civil relationships. Sometimes we're tempted to agree with Jesus, who called us a faithless and perverse generation. And it is then that we are tempted to give up on ourselves, wondering how long we too have to bear this world. 
but we also know that like Jesus, our frustration is not the end. And that we will, with your grace, continue in our faith and our ministry. So God, restore us, renew us, and forgive us. And now we ask that you accept our prayers for others. For Bruce and Nancy. In the silence of our souls, we lift up to you those who we care about and who need your presence. And now hear us as we pray, as Jesus taught us and in whose name we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite you to rise in body or spirit, and join in our closing hymn, number 193. Thank you. to the world to serve your Lord. Go into the world knowing you are not alone, for the Spirit is with you. Go in peace. Amen.